So guys, I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. So today I have two consumer grade uninterruptible power supplies. Uh, these are the battery backups that you typically buy for your computer, or your home entertainment center. These are used, these are ones that I purchased with my own money. Uh, both of these models advertise a stepped approximation to a sine wave waveform. So now what do I mean by that? So a true sine wave power that comes out of your outlet should look like just that, a sine wave. Um, I got my oscilloscope here, so I'll illustrate what that should look like. Don't do this at home unless you really know what you're doing and get yourself killed. So see here. That's what sine wave power looks like out of your outlet. Notice that the, the waveform is nice and smooth. Power is always, or the voltage is always changing. There's no flat spots. That's what you want to see. And as you can see, that's almost exactly 60 hertz. And this is attenuated, so this signal is reduced a bit. But this is, it should be about a 120 volts RMS. Okay, so take a mental picture of that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see what that same waveform looks like on each of these UPSs. Okay, so first we're going to go with the APC Backups XS1500. This battery is a little old, but it's fully charged. Unit is functional. So I'm going to plug the power cable into the back of this. Pray I don't short anything out in doing so. Okay, so we should see the same waveform that we saw out of the wall, because right now it's not on battery backup. Okay, so roughly the same thing. I'm going to pull the power from this APC. We're going to take a look at how it changes. So let's yank this power cable out of the wall. You hear this thing, the fan going now. It kicked on into battery backup mode. Now, what the heck is this? That doesn't look like the same waveform, does it? So, what's going on here, this is the bottom of your quote-unquote sine wave coming up, going to zero, and that'll be key, so remember that later. You come up positive, come back to zero, then negative again. And you can see the scope is even having trouble zeroing in on it, so a lot of these, these uh, measurements are freaking out a little bit, you can see on the display. Again, this is also attenuated, so you're not going to see... 120 volts RMS. This is attenuated 10x, but they call this a, step, a stepped approximation to a sine wave. I could build a circuit in about 10 minutes that builds this type of stepped approximation to sine wave. This is not a very impressive. So a lot of uh, what they call active power factor correction power supplies, um, basically any power supply on a computer that is um, 80 plus certified or better, may have a problem with this waveform because of this zero point here where the where the voltage is zero the power is zero so those power supplies because of their efficiency and i won't go into the physics behind it all they may view this as um essentially no power and they may not work okay so in my personal opinion i'm not an electrical engineer but i know a thing or two or at least i like to think i do that's not a very good waveform for uh, a device that's designed for pure AC power. Now, let's unplug here. Let's go to the cyber power unit. Let's plug this thing back in. Shut the fan off. Okay. Let's go to the cyber power. This is an 825 AVR. Again, these are all used. All purchased with my own money. No one's paying me to do this. Let's see what we see here. Let's turn it on, I guess, too, right? Okay, so this is plugged into the wall. Well, that's a really goofy waveform. What? There we go. That's better. So this should be wall power. So getting pretty close to what we saw before. Nice smooth wave, about 60 hertz. Now let's unplug it. Make it go into battery backup mode. What the heck?
I'm not sure what this is, but this is horrible. Let's do a roll so we can see. Let's uh, dial this back a little bit. This is an absolutely horrible waveform. I mean, this is almost difficult to read it so bad. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. So it looks like in this very rudimentary test, the APC did a much better job. I mean, at least you could kind of see the resemblance to a sine waveform. This one, I'm struggling. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but nor am I an electrical engineer skilled with using these things, but yeah, so not a very pretty waveform. This battery's probably about to die. All right, so you guys see what these relatively inexpensive consumer grade, and I want to emphasize these are consumer grade. This is not the type of equipment you would use in a server rack. Uh, but this is what you might buy on Amazon or at Staples or Office Depot or wherever these things are sold. Um, these are, again, stepped approximation to a sign where they didn't look very approximated to me, but that's my personal opinion. I have ordered a true sine wave unit by this same company, CyberPower. Um, it was about $200 for a capacity similar to this, 1500 volt amps. So we'll see how that performs on the oscilloscope. True sine wave, we would expect a waveform similar to this, not too different from this. So that should be here in a couple of days and we'll pick it up then. Okay, so I lied a little bit. So before we wait for the new one to arrive, I just want to do a brief demonstration of why that waveform matters. So I've plugged an electrical fan. Uh, it's not in battery backup mode right now. Remember, this is the power, the UPS that actually seemed to perform a little bit better. And turn on the fan. So this should be as if the fan was running off the wall outlet because it is. So notice, this is the max speed now. I don't hope you guys can hear that, but it seems to be chugging along pretty good. I'm gonna unplug it and notice how things change. I don't know if you can hear, but the fan's starting to hum pretty loudly. It's slowed down a bit. I'm gonna plug it back in again. Notice that humming died almost instantly and the fan picked up. So, AC induction motors, of which this is one, they like true sine wave power. And again, a lot of the newer computer power supplies and possibly other types of power supplies that use active power factor correction are designed for sine wave power. So, you really can't use these types of things anymore, these stepped approximation to a sine wave power supply, at least the ones that do such a poor job at it, in my personal opinion. So again, we're gonna pause a couple days. Should have a new one of these that is true sine wave power uh, coming in. So our friends at Amazon have dropped off a new battery backup. This one is a advertises sine wave output, not approximation of sine wave, sine wave. So let's unbox this and stick it on the scope. Okay, got everything unboxed and packaged. And even here it says that it supports active PFC power supplies. The CyberPower UPS system supports high efficiency power supplies with active power factor correction. Active PFC is used to improve the efficiency of delivery. So uh, this power supply should be pretty close to what the wall looks like. Got the UPS turned on by simply holding down the power button for two seconds. We'll cycle through the display, see what we see. Nothing too earth shattering yet. It says the battery is 100%. Zero events. 123 volts input, 123 output, 60 hertz. Now this should be a line interactive power supply and those types of power supplies do not condition the power that comes in from the utility. So as long as the utility power is present and it meets the standards that this thing deems, it will just pass through that utility power. So if you have noisy utility power, this won't do anything to help you. 
They do make UPSs that will do that, but they're far more expensive, way out of this price range. All right, so let's plug it in and give it a test. Okay, so there's our waveform uh, on utility power. About what we would expect to see. The signal has been attenuated 10x, so don't pay too much attention to the numerics, but the waveform itself is what you want to focus on. And we're getting almost exactly 60 hertz again, which is what we'd expect in the United States. Anyway. Let's unplug the UPS and see what happens. Wow. Anybody see a difference? That's pretty darn good. Holding rock solid at 60 hertz. I didn't see any, really anything in the waveform change. Did you? Let's re-trigger and see if we see any subtle differences. Let me get this thing zoomed in on one of the peaks so we can see what it actually looks like. Okay, so that's the, the peak on utility power. Pretty smooth. Let's take a look at that when we are on battery power. To be honest with you, it actually looks a little bit better on battery power. It's pretty darn impressive. So again, that's battery. Utility. Notice the utility is a little bit flatter at the peak, whereas on battery it's a little bit more round. So overall, I would say this UPS is a real solid winner and real solid performer. Again, having only unboxed it now and not putting it to a, a long-term test, the waveforms are infinitely better than the, the uh, stepped approximation to side, sine wave units like that older cyber power unit, unit that I had laying around that didn't really do its job and the APC. So APC probably does make one of these true sine wave UPSs as well but um, I don't have one of those so unfortunately I can't compare these two side by side but certainly this unit based solely on this testing and what the scope looks like seems like a real solid performer um, the batteries do appear to be replaceable they do appear to be set, sealed lead acid batteries just as you would expect uh, let's see the, I think they had the replacement battery in the manual somewhere so if anybody ever needs this saw it somewhere in here It is right here. So this one takes an RB1280X2B. That's the 1500 volt amp unit. So it's all this stuff here. Okay, so they talk a little bit about some of the specifications for the unit. They do say it is sine wave. It's rated for up to 900 watts. 120 volts AC plus or minus 5%. 60 hertz plus or minus three, uh, three hertz. Uh, yeah, seal, let us, it's you all listed. Typical battery life is three to six years, they say, and here's a block diagram here. So you have your input, an EMI filter, surge suppression to the charging, charging circuit for the battery, and then for the inverter. So I guess this is the really what you're paying for to get your true sine wave output. Now it does say it has AVR, which does suggest that it, at least here, that it does condition utility output. Let's see if we can find more about that in here. What is AVR? Stabilizes inconsistent utility power voltage to nominal levels that are safe for equipment. Inconsistent incoming utility power may be damaging to important data files and blah, blah, blah. AVR automatically increases low utility power and decreases high utility power to a consistent and safe 110-120 volts. If incoming utility voltage drops below 90 volts or exceeds 140, the unit automatically switches to battery power. Interesting, okay. So it does appear that I was wrong and it does do some conditioning of the utility power. Now if there are frequency variations in the utility power, it didn't say it would do anything about that. So if for some reason the total harmonic distortion of, utility, of the utility power is high, don't know what this would do unless it was just a voltage problem. 
But again, pretty cool stuff. I mean, this thing was 200 bucks and that's pretty impressive. Let's see what the display says. Oh, we're in utility power now. Let's see what it says. So we're unplugged now. Let's see if the utility, this displaces is anything different. So it's looking at runtime estimates going down slowly as you'd expect. Input, output, output. Batteries at 99%, 98, 97, 96. 95, so maybe it's not really fully charged. Maybe we should let it charge for a while, like the instruction say. Anyway, hope this video helps you, and if, uh, if you like this type of stuff, uh, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day.